is this the best Penn State team in history? Is this the best NCAA team in wrestling history? There's a lot of comparing and contrasting to do, but this team is going to have to accomplish a lot. I think getting 10 All-Americans, you definitely need at least five national champions. And then somehow you got to break that scoring record, the NCAA record set by the 1997, go figure, Iowa Hawkeyes led by Dan Gable of 170 points. I think they can do it, but we got to go through and see if they can check off all of those boxes. Joe, when you watch this team, they they pass the eye test for you, right? Of being the best team ever. At least maybe and and we still got to talk what about the 2019 Penn State team, right? They got to go up against that one too and see if they can even be the best team in Nittany Lion history, but I I like this group's chances a lot. Yeah, 2019, 2017, another great one. Uh, mm -hmm. You got to say there's at least a chance uh, that they end up uh, as the best college team ever. I think that's definitely a possibility when you, if you end up getting 10 All Americans, which is very right. possible, and at least um, I probably set the minimum at four national champions, but you probably want at least five in there. I think if both of those things happen, uh, you got you to gotta talk about it. Um, it's kind of hard to say now because to get a good gauge on this question, there's got to be like a really sort of deep dive, right? Just hours of research to see like how these guys stack up. You got to um, kind of uh, do a lot, but just from like a surface value, I think Penn state has the second best coach of all time. That should definitely factor in to the discussion They have two yeah. guys that, are going to be likely four-time national champions, which only a handful of guys have done before, including said coach, Kale Sanderson. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you got to look at the gap between Penn State and the next best team, and that's got to be about as significant as a gap as there's been maybe of all time. Now, a lot of that, some of that is due to Penn State already having the reputation and people expecting Penn State to win it all because they've won it all so often. But a lot of that's mm -hmm. also due to the talent that this year's Penn State team has, and they have a chance to get 10 All-Americans. I would say I'd be surprised that they don't have at least four national champions, definitely a chance for more than that. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of talk about this um, over the next uh, – month or so um, until NCAAs are wrapped up. But this team has definitely played itself at least into the discussion as the best of the Kale Sanderson era. And, and if you're the best Kale Sanderson Penn State team, you got to be looked at as you got to be almost automatically inserted into the best ever debate because this is mm -hmm. next to Gables, Iowa. This, this has to be the best stretch any program's ever had. So let's go through the, you said at least four national champions, and maybe we see where a fifth or a sixth can sneak in, okay? So I imagine yep. for that everybody that, let's talk about the obvious ones, Carter Starachi, Aaron Brooks, Greg Kirkfleet, those are your three obvious ones. And then Bo Bartlett makes a huge statement. We're going to talk about more uh, of that one, but he has cemented himself as a number one wrestler. So now does that who who are your guaranteed for then, or at least your your heavy favorites going into the NCAAs? Because those three, I, I would say, again, anything can happen in wrestling. I think we know that of, of all the sports out there, truly anything can happen in wrestling. But when I look at, I look at three locks, three serious heavy favorites. It's not that I don't think Bo Bartlett can do it, but I mean, it is very close in that 141 weight class, even though Bo Bartlett is out in front right now. So is he your fourth or Mitchell Messenbrink? Of course, Levi Haynes, right? I don't want to forget about Levi Haynes there. So then, okay, so let me put in your three locks that should, or your four locks that should come to mind. Haynes, Kirkley, Starachi, and Brooks. So therefore, that leaves a fifth and the sixth as does Mess is Messenbrink really that good? I think he's established himself as a top three wrestler here at this point. You don't. You dominate, I, I'm dominant to an extent, right? But you had a clear gap between yourself and the number six wrestler at, in your weight class. So it, it's a matter of Bartlett, Messenbrink. Are they the ones that, can they do it and put this Penn State group over the top? Because those four seem pretty handy, especially, Levi, I mean, Levi Haynes at, at 157, what he was able to do to a fellow top five wrestler in this one. The, the gap isn't even close. 
Yeah, and, and we talked about uh, Levi Haynes last week about the style mm -hmm. points weren't really there yet. Uh, th that Those questions were definitely answered tonight. I mean, shutting out a top five wrestler, um, I think it was a shutout, uh, and making him look like he didn't even want to be on the mat uh, yeah. over three minutes of riding time, I think it was. That was just absolute domination. And Levi Haynes, I think it's a clear favorite, and I think Bo Bartlett is a clear favorite. Penn State, um, I'll kind of take it uh, one step uh, further. They, I'm feeling pretty good about five national champions. I really am. And talking, uh, we, we've mentioned uh, Carter and Brooks, who are probably going to be four-time champs. Greg Kirkfleet yeah. finally has the mountain that was uh, Mason Paris out of the way. Nothing should mm -hmm. be stopping him. Now, uh, Bo Bartlett uh, has passed the gauntlet of Jesse Mendez. And Real Woods over the past two weeks, and Levi Haynes is starting to look like he's starting to look like the guy we saw in March of last year. So um, those guys um, are doing their thing. Uh, Messenbrink, I was uh, not that uh, as a journalist, you're not supposed to have a rooting interest, but <laughs> for him to lose that major decision uh, in the last 15 seconds mm. or whatever it was, that that was a little disappointing. Uh, yeah. But still, the, the guys had, I think. 10 major, uh, 10 bonus point victories out of his 14 matches coming into the night, 10 of 15 now, something like that. Yeah. Uh, that that's pretty good. And when you're wrestling a guy that was in the top six, um, they have no choice, uh, interim at foil, whatever, has no choice but to move Messenbrink up now. I, I don't know. I was surprised to see him stay at seven this week, uh, but he'll be up uh, at least in the six, maybe into the top five. Mm -hmm. Uh so that's a guy uh, you mentioned top three. Um, I'd be surprised if he's not at least one of the two um, yep. wrestlers uh, on Saturday night uh, at 165. So we'll see what happens there. And another guy, I don't know if I'd put him into the national title discussion. How about the statement that Aaron Nagal made tonight? Um, yeah. You know, we talked about it before. He hadn't um, really uh, been up to par uh, in his bigger matches. Uh, and tonight... Granted, he was supposed to win when you're number six going against number 20, but the way he did it, uh, just an 11 uh shutout, um, that's pretty good. And doing that on the road, and that was after Brayden Davis' third tonight with a loss of 125. So not that Penn State needed that because um, they, they were going to beat Iowa pretty much no matter what, but that kind of set a tone for the rest of the night because after that, uh, Bartlett uh, gets his win over – Real Woods, and it was really all Penn State from there. Uh, uh, Case, I don't know why I blinked on Tyler Kasak's name, uh, but his yeah. uh, match didn't go the way he wanted, but still, he was down 8-2, right. which is the sudden victory, so positives to take away from the true freshman there. Uh, and then, even though he lost tonight and, let's face it, deserved to lose uh, last week, uh, we don't need to talk about uh, that anymore, but um. With how 125 has been this season uh, in the Big Ten, just a total yep. uh, crapshoot. We saw it again tonight with yep. uh, D'Agostino from Michigan getting upset. Um, I wouldn't completely roll out uh, Davis to make a run um, at 125. Just with how it's been and with what we saw last year, one of the biggest upsets, some would say the biggest upset in wrestling history, Spencer Lee losing to uh, Matt Ramos in the semifinals. Uh, yeah. Ramos is still there, and he's going to be the favorite until someone knocks him off. But 125 is really the Wild West in the Big Ten, and I wouldn't Absolutely. predict I wouldn't predict uh, Brian Davis to win a national title yet. I think he'll get there uh, by the time his career is over. But uh, he'll, I think he'll be in the mix at 125. So um, that's I think Penn State has seven guys that are at least in the conversation uh, for a national title, and I think Aaron Nagal is. Gun, could play himself uh, into that uh, final four too. So, uh, yeah, it's it's looking really good. It's hard to talk about Penn State wrestling sometimes because it's like the same song and dance every mm -hmm. single week. Um, but come March, uh, you might see some things in that in those NCAA championships that you've never seen before from Penn State, and it's really exciting to think about. So your core four are Levi Haynes, Carter Storacci, Aaron Brooks, and Greg Kirkfleet. And I'm pretty sure the entire wrestling community is looking at it that way as well with a, a real serious chance. I, I wouldn't say that they they shouldn't necessarily be the odds on favor just because of how good and how close 
141 and 165 are. Bo Bartlett cementing himself at number one. Mitchell Messenbrink definitely has got to be, he's making it to the semifinals. He is with one of the four yeah. best wrestlers at 165, but that class is insane. 165 might be the best class overall. And like you said, you don't know who you're going to get at 125. So Braden Davis might have lost tonight against Iowa, but that doesn't mean he couldn't. And freshmen, the younger wrestlers will just naturally get better as the season goes along. So we might see Braden Davis start to hit his peak in the middle of March. But uh, And Aaron Nagal should be in the conversation as well as one of the four best at 133. So you have a lot of names. Now it's a matter of, okay, how many All-American wrestlers are they going to have? Because... There's already been the speculation that Penn State could have a clean sweep at 10, and that is the record, getting all 10 of your wrestlers into the top eight. Tyler Kasak, you saw him lose tonight against Rachi, but that's, again, Rachi's really talented in his own right, and Kasak is still a, a true freshman at, at this point. So I, I don't want to say, oh, you know, uh, Joe, who's the weakest link here? But uh, out of all the wrestlers, I think at 149, that is probably the one that's the further, like, I don't want to say the furthest away, but in terms of overall talent and how likely they are, the likelihood, who has the least likelihood of, of getting into the top eight, it would be Tyler Kasak at 149. Penn State realistically should expect to have nine All-Americans when all said and done this season. Yeah, and it really uh, kind of makes you think, uh, what if uh, Shane Van Ness didn't get hurt? Because that's mm. the guy who was an All-American last year and would have been a huge favorite to be an All-American this year and would have been yep. in the mix uh, for a national title. And as much promise as uh, Tyler uh, Kasek's shown uh, this season, uh, I don't think he's in the Final Four national title mix. I think he is in the All-American mix. Um, but uh, to say somebody's a weak link, I agree, Zach. Uh, that's uh, – I know it's we we can comparison yeah. Joe because everybody is so great in this lineup. But if I'm talking in terms of likelihood percentages, Tyler Kasak is, is in yeah. last by virtue of just everybody else is out in front. It's not because he's a bad wrestler. I mean, gosh, he's yeah. top ten as a freshman already. But we're talking top eight. I can he can he yes. But if we're talking about the least likely of the bunch, it is Kasak at this point. Yeah. Absolutely, and when you're a true freshman, uh, that that all that says is that this Penn State team might be historically good, and mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Penn State does uh, next season uh, with Kasak being a sophomore. Absolutely. But you also have Van Ness coming back, and uh, Kill's going to figure it out. But um, yeah. that's looking uh, way ahead. Uh, but yeah, we're the best ever um, debate. I think. If Van Ness had been healthy and living up to his expectations, mm -hmm. I think he was number two um, preseason, um, this team would have an even stronger case to be uh, the best of all time. Uh, but uh, the fact that they lost a guy who could have won a national championship and we're still having yeah. this talk, uh, that really that says a lot about uh, what this program is. So then the last, the last piece of this puzzle, the piece of the pie, if you will, is the 170 point mark the NCAA the NCAA record set by the 1997 Iowa Hawkeyes, and for Penn State, uh, you can it, how how we're able to gauge that. I mean, it's going to take a lot of math. Do I like Penn State to do that if they're going to get at least right? We're anticipating a lot, like a guarantee. We're anticipating heavy favorites for four national champions at a minimum. Like right, right. We're talking minimums here. Nine All Americans, seriously. And then the way with, with the sport adding the extra point on a takedown. So therefore, it's easier for guys like Carter Storacci and Aaron Brooks, who are and Mitchell Messenbrink, too, in this conversation, that are already naturally gifted offensive attackers and technicians when it comes to that game, who are just, you know, they're, they're great on defense, but offensive game is just so completely different. It's that much better. They can rack up bonus points along the way. So that 170 point mark, when Penn State, that 2019 team had 157 and a half. So don't think that's like, well, that's the that's probably the most difficult proposition out of all the things, the national champions, the All-Americans getting to 10. I would say that reaching the 170 mark and surpassing it might end up being the easiest of the three to go down as one of the best teams, the best team in NCAA history. Yeah. Um 
And uh, I'm, I wouldn't call myself uh, an expert on like uh, the scoring uh, aspect uh, stats, of everything. Probabil to, uh, stats and probability, Joe. <laughs> yeah, when, when when it comes to that. Uh, but yeah, um, and it's it's kind of hard to predict like what those things are going to be um, in March. Um, just like yep. uh, from just uh, from that standpoint. But uh, you mentioned the style of wrestlers uh, that this team has. Uh, Messenbrink mm -hmm. obviously is an offensive guy. Carter Starachi, a big uh, offensive guy. Um, and if Levi Haynes continues to show what he showed uh, tonight and maybe a little less of what he was showing earlier with winning but yep. not really scoring as much, uh, maybe he's a guy that could get um, some more bonus points along the way. I think he has uh, eight bonus points win wins now, uh, so that's mm -hmm. pretty good on his part too. But uh, that that's a great point because not only does Penn State have very talented wrestlers, the styles of wrestlers Penn State has right. uh, kind of uh, bodes well um, for scoring. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we can look at uh, the past teams, uh, how much they scored, um, and kind of uh, mm -hmm. kind of estimate uh, where Penn State's going to be. Um, but in uh, in these debates, uh, you got that's points overall points are something you have to look at. And um, as you mentioned, uh, the personnel that Penn State has. Um, I think I think it bodes well um offensively in that department. And um there's a lot of bonus points, um, not too many uh takedowns uh on the other side. So yep, it's pretty good.